Blessings to you this evening, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Again, this is a Wednesday night devotion being prepared for uh, September the 2nd, if it, you believe it's September already. It's taken from the Psalms, and we're in Psalm chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. And, and it's entitled, or I titled it, Help in Evil Days. Uh, again, as many of David's uh, Psalms are, are about that very thing, troubles within and without, and how to deal with those troubles, and how he prays, and his prayers during that period of time, his songs that he was able to sing, even out of the depths of depression, and sometimes from a mountaintop celebrating his God, and, and, and uh, boasting of the great and wonderful deeds of his God, and that he is indeed his God. So uh, we come to this this psalm, and I love it, because when you're flipping through the psalms, and you're looking for something, for some, some uh, uh, food, some spiritual food for the week, and depending on where you are in your life and the circumstances you find yourself in, as you flip through the Psalms, if you start at the beginning, you know, and then those first Psalms are well known to me, you get to chapter 12 in, in, the, in the NIV translation, and the very first word, in the very first verse, is help. Help in, 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 in evil days. And so this is a Psalm you can turn to when you need help. Uh, as many of his Psalms are, this one just in particular stands out to me. Help. It says in verse 1 of chapter 12, Help, Lord, for the godly are no more. The faithful have vanished from among men. Now, that's an interesting statement. This is a psalm for times when it feels like you're the only one doing what's right. You're the only one doing what God says in his word. Uh, you're, you're the only one still going to church and committed to the great commission and the great commandment. And, uh, and, uh, and you're hanging in there and, and you're doing it. But where's everybody else? I mean, listen to what he says. The godly are no more. I mean, there's no more godly people. I'm the only one left. The faithful have vanished from among men. I mean, where, where are faithful people today? People are so faithless. And, and they act so ungodly. And I'm the only one that is, that is left. It, it kind of reminds me of an old Linda Ronstadt song. An album I used to have when you used to have albums. Uh, poor, poor, pitiful me. And I kind of like that song. Of course, I like Linda Ronstadt. Uh, and she did a lot of other songs besides that. But I can hear her in the background of this song of, of, of David singing poor, poor, pitiful, pitiful me. So in that context, let me just look at it here a little bit. Help, Lord, for the godly are no more. The faithful have vanished from among men. You know, the prophet Elijah was one of the greatest prophets in Israel. And, I mean, he called fire down out of heaven and destroyed the prophets of, of Baal, who were the, who were the, the priests of Jezebel. And, uh, and Jezebel, of course, was always chasing uh, Elijah. And he did so many great things. And God used him to bring a drought on the land to bring them to, to repentance. And yet, we find Elijah doing the same thing that we read in this psalm of, of David. He runs and he hides in a cave and starts singing, poor, poor, pitiful me. I, I'm the only one, God. And, and we read that whole story, which is kind of an expansion to me, uh, to this psalm in 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 and 10. Uh, there he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? That's what God says. Elijah, what are you doing in this cave? You know, sitting around playing Linda Rodstad albums. Well, he replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. You know, I've been doing all this godly stuff. You see? Uh, he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant. See, nobody, everybody else is ungodly. Nobody's doing what your covenant says, what your word says. They have broken down... Uh, broken down your altars. They have put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me too. Poor, poor, pitiful me. And that's the way that we really feel sometimes. We, we look at folks. I know uh, I, I look back at the, all the professors, uh, the great preachers that I grow up with. They've all, all gone on to be with the Lord. And I don't, I don't see those kind of, of men replacing them. And, and sometimes you feel like, am I the only one that, that still... You know, is, is preaching the Bible the old-fashioned way? Uh, you know, still believes in, in, in a high degree of inerrancy of the Word of God? That, uh, that every word is, is precious? Who preaches the whole truth? 
Am I the only one? Well, you know, sometimes it only it feels that way, but it only feels that way is what God's going to tell tell Elijah. And and really in the, in this in this Psalm of David, we're going to say the godly, you know, the good guys are no more. Uh, the faithful have vanished from the earth. I'm all alone. There's actually a name we put on this. It's called the Elijah syndrome. And, and when you do something great in ministry or you see a great working of God or God does something great in your church or maybe you're riding a mountaintop for a while, you know, and you've had these mountaintops and the church is growing and, and, and kids are coming out for Sunday school and they're learning their lessons, you know, and everything could, 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 could be great. And you're kind of on an adrenaline high. And this is actually a physiological thing that happens to you. You're on an adrenaline high, so full of adrenaline because of all the excitement that's going on. But but adrenaline only lasts for a while. And when adrenaline hits an end, you bottom out. You crash. Bam. And there can be a severe depression after an adrenaline high. I see it all the time when I was in the fire department. You know, you go out in the fire trucks and sirens and lights and you're pulling hose and you're putting out a fire and you and, 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 and you, you get everything done and it was a good job and then you come back and you, you sit down on the bumper of the truck and you crash. Well, you, your adrenaline had been up for so long that now you're depressed. You feel terrible. Uh, you're, you're zapped. And that's kind of what we see here in Elijah and what David is praying. Help, Lord, for the godly are no more the faithful have vanished from among men. You know, am I the only one left who's doing what's right? You know, God answered uh, uh, Elijah, and he tells him, I reserve, you know, you feel all alone, Elijah. You know, you're sitting there, poor, poor, pitiful me in the cave. And he says, I reserve 7,000 in Israel. All those whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him or embraced him. He says, you're not alone, Elijah. It only feels like you're alone. I've got my people everywhere. They haven't bowed their knee to bail, they're standing just because you don't know about them. Don't mean they're not they're not there. Even though it may feel that way, and it feels that way in David's life, like he's the only one that's doing what's right, and the bad guys guys are winning. And so we have this psalm that deals with that. Help! What do I do uh, when it feels that way? And he goes on and expands upon that in verse two. Everyone lies to his neighbor. Their flattering lips speak with deception. Everybody's a liar. Everything is fake news. You know, nobody tells the truth anymore. You know, all these these deceptive conspiracies and all of this, and and, and uh, everybody lies to his neighbor. They they flatter with their lips. There's all these deceptions going on. Yeah, sometimes it feels like that, especially in in our day. And then there's this kind of request, and it is veiled in a request. It says in verse three, "May the Lord cut off all flattering lips." And every boastful tongue. What do I do with this problem when it feels that way? Uh, request. Don't tell the Lord what to do. Uh, God's on the throne. Uh, he's got the whole world in his hands, as the old song says. You don't tell God what to do. But this is, this is a, a request. May. It's a reminder to ourselves when you sing this song of help that uh, that's the Lord's job to take care of all that. Uh, my job is to be zealous for him, even when it feels like I'm all alone. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips and every boastful tongue that says we will triumph with our tongues. We own our lips. Who is our master? Again, it's interesting how their lips run their lives. People uh, are big to run off at the mouth about uh, all kinds of things and make big boastful claims and say this and that and it's going to be this way and and that way but you see very little of it translated to their to their life they're all talk uh they're no show and that should not be be true of us but god's going to take care of them uh he'll cut off those lips he'll silence those mouths in his time that's his job may the lord do his job and then verse five Fourthly, it says, because of the oppression of the weak and the groaning of the needy, I will now rise, says the Lord. I will protect them from those who malign them. See, it's not because of the kings and the great people and, and uh, 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 your priests, you know, who, who, who think they are great men that I'm going to get up and do something, God says. I'm going to do it for the weakest of the weak, the poorest of the poor. I'm going to do it for those 
poor folks that those people are running down with their mouths and blaming for everything. I'm going to do it for those because God hears the cries of the poor and the needy. And so God says, because of the oppression, holding them back, oppressing them, the groaning of the needy, I will now rise and I will protect them from those who malign them. The assurance of God that he's got this. Um, in Psalm 10, verses 17 through 18, hear what God says. He says, You hear, O Lord, the desire, that is the prayer or the wish, of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry, defending the fatherless and the oppressed, in order that a man who is of the earth uh, may terrify no more. So when they are terrified by the oppressors, when they put down the poor uh, and the needy, uh, those are the most uh, vulnerable, those that are easy to malign in society. God takes up their cause. And it's all about when we feel down, we feel like we're all alone. We're the only one who's trying to hang in there, running to God and yell, help, respectfully requesting of him, may the Lord. And he will take he would take care of this. In Psalm 103, 6, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. We can know that. God's word is true. It endures forever. That, 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 that God is going to take care of it. He defends the oppressed, those that are being maligned by those malicious tongues, uh, like those who made fun of Jeremiah in our study of Jeremiah, those who no doubt were making fun of Elijah. Psalm 146, 7, he upholds the cause of the oppressed. He gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free, those that have been been wronged unjustly. That's God's job, and he'll do that. All we got to do is cry out for help, even though it feels like we're all alone, and even though we're having a little pity party. In other words, don't run to a cave and hide. Run to God and cry out for help. Psalm 72, 4, he will defend the afflicted among the peoples. He will save the children of the needy. He will crush the oppressor. Psalm 72, 12, for he will deliver the needy who cry out, help, Lord, the afflicted who have no one to help them, who feel alone, that they're fighting this spiritual battle all by themselves. They're not fighting it by themselves. God is, on, is, is, is helping them. And they have God, if only they'll cry out for help. And now this is a, a testimony to, to the victory of the godly. If they just learn to trust God, to be godly men and women, even if no, it seems like nobody else is doing what God tells them in his word, in his covenant, and that God's got the rest of it covered. Fifthly, and uh, it says in verse 6, the because, and the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver refined in furnace of clay, purified seven times. How can we uh, trust that God's got this? Because he said so. His words are perfect. His words are flawless. He will crush the oppressor. He will deliver the needy if they cry out. He will, he will, he will be with us in whatever we face in our life. And we're not alone because he says we're not alone. We're never alone. But you got to believe God's word. Ooh, this is a big faith thing. We cry out uh, to God, help, right? We, we, we pray, regardless of how we feel. Instead of hiding in a cave, we run to God. And we have to know something, because God's words are true. Absolute truth, true all the time. They're true even when I don't believe they're true. God's words are in action. They're flawless. They've been purified over and over and over again. This is talking about relying on the Word of God and it's truthfulness rather than relying on my feelings. My feelings go up and down like Elijah's feelings went up and down. And then we read uh, finally uh, in verse uh, 7, 6 point on my little outline this, this, that, this evening. O Lord, you will keep us safe and you will protect us from such people forever. You see the faith? thinking about God's word and how perfect it is. And now he can sing, Oh Lord, you will keep us safe. You will protect us from such people forever. I don't have to hide uh, in, a, in a cave and listen to my Linda Ronstadt albums. The wicked freely strut about when what is vile is honored among men. That's the way of the wicked. But God 
takes care of the righteous. And we just have to run to God and cry out that God will, will help us in faith, believing the truthfulness of God's Word. God bless you.